how about this? Yeah. They're about to fuck. Okay. And he's like building up this moment for fucking months. Yeah. Because she's a hardline Christian. He's going to church. Yeah. He doesn't want to. No. But he wants to hit that. So she's finally said, yes, this is the night. Yep. They're going to do it at midnight. <laughs> they're right. going to gonna ring in the new year. Sure. <laughs> but he needs to piss. Oh no. So he goes out to piss. Okay. The croc just bites his dick and he comes back into the tent and he just like covers her face in what? blood. Just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. He jumped over three linebackers in midair. Sprouted animals like a gazelle. <laughs> no one laughs at a master quack fool. Real nice. Many have died from starvation due to the difficulty of finding enough food such as seals. Shut up. No more Mr. Nice Duck. That's it. Right, Mr. Six? What do you make of that? You know, it's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. The Round Carpet Podcast. When I was born, I was called Corey Farrell. I'm Corey Farrell now, and this is the Brown Carpet Podcast. My name's Josh Grove. <laughs> uh, this is another From the Vault episode, and Josh, this is quite possibly my top five brown carpet films that we've made. Is it really? Yeah. It, three years ago, we put out an episode called Crocopalooza. Yeah. And it took them about two years to steal the idea. We see you, Asylum Film. Yeah, we see you. But this was based on a, a news story out of Florida about people flushing meth down the toilets during police raids. And crocodiles in the sewers getting a hold of it and going wild. So we took that story and we brought it to Australia, set it at Australian Music Festival, switched gators for crocs, yep. a B25 for croc. During a flood, Glenworth Valley. A methed up croc just runs riot. Chaos. Chaos ensues. Yeah. I think we even killed a, another Irwin. Did we really? <laughs> yeah, Bindi. We killed Bindi. As if that family hasn't been through enough. That's horrible, isn't it? Put on your gum boots and enjoy. Strap on your gators, get muddy. Slip off your crocs and enjoy. Have a look at this crock of shit. Enjoy the movie that inspired Elton John's Crocodile Rock. <laughs> <laughs> what is the weird headline that we're going to turn into a film tonight? Mate, the headline for the story this week is Warning issued for the rise of meth gators in Alabama. <laughs> yeah. The Loretto Police Department in Tennessee is imploring people to think twice before they decide to flush their drugs down the toilet. The plead came in the form of a Facebook post after law enforcement caught a presumed drug dealer, Andy Perry, flushing numerous paraphernalia items down the toilet during a recent bust. Hey, let's be real. Mm. If you've got to get rid of some narcotic sharpish, the toilet is a good option. Sure. Don't always listen to the media. When you send something down the sewer pipe, it ends up in our retention ponds for processing before it is sent downstream. But they are not really prepared for meth. (laughs) Ducks, geese, and other fowl frequent our treatment ponds, and we shudder to think what one all hyped up on meth would do. Uh Furthermore, if it made it far enough, we could create meth gators in the Shoal Creek and the Tennessee River down in North (laughs) Alabama. Earlier this year, scientists used alligators as subjects in a study about dinosaur hearing. They managed to collect data by giving prehistoric creatures headphones and a dose of ketamine. What? That sounds like a good party. This isn't a science experiment. This is just a a kick-on. That does sound like a weird kick on gone wrong. Scientists, bored scientists on a Sunday night and been doing drugs all weekend. Let's give ketamine to alligators. What music do you reckon they play the alligators? Oh, Critter and Dorfmeister. Yeah, right. (laughs) Bit of spongle. (laughs) (laughs) We'll go ahead and take the chilled out ketamine gators with headphones over the super meth crazed gators in northern Alabama any day of the week. Yeah, I would too. Yeah. Let's face it, gators are scary enough. You get a gator that's been awake for five days. Yeah. With all itchy skin, thinks it's got spiders underneath its scales. Twitch, you know, they, they do that double eyelid thing, yeah, the reptile yeah. thing, and it's just twitching. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you reckon, mate? Meth oh, gators. This, is the, this has all the traits of an amazing methed up gator film. feel like it's right in our wheelhouse. We've got drugs, mm. we've got gators, we've got monsters. We don't have any dicks. We'll squeeze a dick in. We'll squeeze a dick in. That's <laughs> <laughs> our motto. We'll squeeze a dick in. We have to make a decision early on. Do we want to localize it and make it a crocodile thing? Yeah, let's bring it home. Okay. Because for one thing, gators are small. Yeah, I know. We bring it over here. We got the crocs. They're fucking huge. some dinosaur motherfuckers. Much over here. more aggressive. Dwarf those little bitches. All right, so we're going to set it in Australia. Yep. How do we get the drugs into the croc? Well, let's take our cues from the story. They get into through the waterways. Why don't we set it like just before New Year's Eve? Yep. We'll set it down in um, Pete's Ridge, Glenworth Valley, where they have the Pete's Ridge Music Festival. Nice little festival that's easy to get cut off. Maybe it's a couple nights before, and we've got a couple of potential dealers who are going to bring their gear in a few nights before and bury it. Right. But maybe they've got to take it across a lake first. They've got a couple of crates of crack meth. So we're saying geographically, this music festival is surrounded by water. Half the valley is a big lake. Yep. The other half is where the festival is going to go down. Right. It's two nights before New Year's Eve. We've got a couple of sketchy characters with 
a dinghy full of narcotics. Yeah. About to row across the lake. Yeah. To take him into the festival. Want to be drug dealers? Want to be drug not dealers? A, not professional drug dealers. No, big stash though. Maybe maybe they've got a big haul in <laughs> from a new uh, Russian supplier. Yeah. And they got these weird wooden crates with like Russian lettering stenciled on the side. They can't read Russian. Where'd you get it from? Some Russian guy. Good gear. I don't know. He said he's Russian. He said here. Da. <laughs> da. So that's, maybe, that's, that's the extent of my Russian. Asterushna Linus Agravaisa. Shredded Distancium Prospect Mira. I knew you were an agent. Yeah. A double agent. Yeah, a bit of collusion. Who's a couple of characters that we can cast as our sketchy drug dealers? So, like a couple of hapless jabronis. Yeah. Australian. A few doofuses. Hamish and Andy, American Rosso. American Rosso? Yeah. They're a little bit older too now, so they're yeah. kind of like a desperation in their face. A bit faces. of crust on them. Yeah. I mean, if they're still dealing drugs at this age, <laughs> things have not gone well. They look like people who listen to ACDC. Scabs on their face. A bit. They're junkies as well. They've been on the pipe. So, how does it go wrong for them? <laughs> okay, so let's say. They're loading these weird <laughs> Russian crates onto this little dinghy. Let's work out what's in it. I reckon rather than anything pure, because it's straight out of Russia, this, yeah. shit's, this shit's very dicey what to we got? begin with. A little bit of crack. Yeah. A little, little bit of meth. Yep. What's that stuff that turns into a zombie? Crocodile. Crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's what the dude scrapes off at the floor at the end of the, end of the working week. Yeah. It's the drug equivalent <laughs> of the meat pie. It's all just rammed in there, whatever all <laughs> the The maggot bag of... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's all jammed into these wooden crates which they load into this little dinghy. And so it's already sitting really low in the water yeah. as they push out into this inky black water to cross the lake to get to the festival grounds. So they're just lit by the moon at this point. Yeah. Oh, this is moody. And they're bickering with each other, old like married couple bickering. But where the fuck did you get it from, Carter? Did you pack any muesli bars? Yeah, fucking what is this, mate? <laughs> this doesn't look like fucking Red Joe's usual stuff. What is it? Oh, come on, my turn on the pipe. One of them needs to piss halfway across. Oh, here we go. Gets up on the edge of the boat, fucking dangles his old mate off the edge and he's taking a piss. Topples Never. over. Never stand and urinate in a boat. Yep, that's the message of this show. Yeah. So one so one of them's in the drink. And his other mate just bursts out laughing, thinks it's hilarious. Yep. Until his mate does not surface. Leroy! Leroy, where are you? Stop playing silly buggers! Not funny anymore, mate! Come on, mate! Pulls out the big torch and he's peering around in the blackness. <laughs> scales. Oh, the prehistoric scales. You know, like the, the Imperial Starship at the start of Star Wars. <laughs> it just never ends, just keeps going. This is a big croc. Yeah. How big is this fucking crocodile? It's over 25 foot. It's a monster croc. Don't Google monsters of croc. <laughs> or if you do, get the spelling right. <laughs> so, so it's he, 20 he, foot. 25 foot. 25 feet of croc. Is that a Russell Crowe band? Yes. 20 odd foot of croc. So he, he reels back from the edge after seeing this crocodile. Yeah. And in that moment of silence, Leroy bursts out of the water behind him and grabs onto him. He's like, save me, save me. And as he heaves him into the boat. What happens? It's just the top half of him. The bottom half's gone. Oh, he's, he's a halfie. Just, just pumping hot ropey streams oh. of blood into the boat. Stepping on his intestines. The croc flicks its tail. Yep. And the boat capsizes. Now they're both in the water. Both in the water. The other bloke starts swimming for the shore. Does he make it? <laughs> of course he doesn't make it. <laughs> of course he doesn't make it. <laughs> what a dumb question. We'll get like an overhead shot. You see the big shadow, shadow turn around. Start to come after him. Big gnashing of teeth. Shoom. And maybe, how's this? Maybe... Just before we go to black, we get a big lightning crack in the sky and rain begins. Are you going to put some rain sound effects? And maybe even we see the one of these crates, the wooden crates bobbing there in the water. Croc takes it. Cut. Two days later, the festival has begun. Full swing. It's packed. There's tents and people and cars and caravans and it's still raining. Torrential rain. We see a young kid with a rock box. That's what they call them kids these days, right? I believe it's a rock box. A rock box? Yeah. He's listening to wireless radio. <laughs> right. You hear the news writer saying, This is the worst rain in fifty years, hundred years. Yeah. Paint the picture that this is a fucking big storm. People in low lying areas are warned of flash flooding. Yeah, and then you hear the little is reception. Yeah. Alright, so then we, we need to meet our heroes. It's a music festival, so it's gonna be a group of millennials, surely. Aussies? It could be Aussies or Maybe we could have some tourists in. Kill some Seppos. Bring some Seppos in. <laughs> yeah. For our American listeners, Australians call you Seppos because um, septic tank. Rhymes with Yanks. It's Cockney, Australian Cockney. Rhyming slang. Um, Seppos, Yanks, septic tanks. You've learned something. So we need to cast the characters. We need six American tourists here for the festival circuit. We want the, uh, the alpha male, the head honcho. We've got the uh, influence, Instagram influencer girl. The waster, the druggie. The nerd. And then maybe like a loved up couple. Yeah, like a real PDA couple. Can't take their hands off each other. Yeah, I reckon they're like that, like a, maybe a, a religious like Christian couple. Oh yeah. And they just do everything but fuck. They're like Christian side hugs. All over the top of the underpants. Over the pants, handies, all that jazz. Yeah, lots of dry grinding. <laughs> That's our group. It's maybe four hours before the headline act. 
take the stage. Yep. Who's our headline act at this festival? Oh, it's got to be bad. It should be a throwback festival to oh, all yeah. bad bands of the 90s and yeah, stuff. Yeah, bring back the bad. Because we I reckon whoever it is, they're going to get mauled by a crocodile at some point. Let's bring back some of the bands that we'd love to see ripped to shreds. Nickelback. Everyone would say Nickelback. Nickelback. That's kind of too obvious. What bands do you hate? Matchbox 20. <laughs> I like Rob Thomas, though. He's a funny guy. Just real quick, though. Kay. Rob Thomas, yeah. Carlos Santana. It's a hot one. Like seven inches from the middays. That's a banger. I definitely want to see Matchbox 20 ripped apart on stage. <laughs> yeah, Maroon 5. Yeah, Maroon 5. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Take Matchbox 20 back purely because I like Rob Thomas. I will not take Matchbox 20 back. <laughs> they're, not, they're not headlining. He's though. not going to die in this They're movie. like a shitty undercard. <laughs> uh, Blink-182. That's harsh. Well... Fucking punk anthems, mate. Vanilla Ice. <laughs> Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli for sure. <laughs> I love it when like shit bands do comebacks. So yeah. maybe it's like a shit band comeback. Thing. You know Rick Astley is touring Australia next year. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you have more than one song? I believe you did, yeah. All right, so Hootie and the Blowfish. Yeah. That's your headline act right there. <laughs> Everyone wants to see Hootie at midnight playing. I only want to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so they're on their way into the festival. Yeah. Headed towards the main stage where currently Matchbox 20 is making shit sounds minus Rob a, Thomas Rob front and centre <laughs> there's about 10 people watching disinterested they've called John Mayer up for a <laughs> yeah, John duet. Mayer's <laughs> definitely there and let, let's say they've gone past the portaloo section and there's one portaloo that's been tipped over and you can just hear this muffled oh fucking help me but they're on their way to the main stage so they're just they're powering past yeah. they don't give a fuck but maybe the nerdy guy is like guys let's got to help him out someone's in serious trouble here so they all go back and lift it wrench the door open and this dude comes out just covered head to toe in feces. Just a gristled, gristled old roadie. He was probably a roadie at Woodstock 99. He's seen some shit. He's seen some shit. Seen Who's some... going to play him? We want, a, we want a great Aussie grizzled bloke. John Jarrett. John Jarrett would be good. Mick from Wolf Creek. He's in a portaloo. Well, yeah. Why not do a nod to Kenny and make it Shane Jacobson? Yeah, it's perfect. Big fella. I can see him rising up out of a portaloo covered in shit. He's let himself go a little bit too. No okay. offense, Shane. You're a nice guy. Okay, but there's, there's a moment between the nerdy kid and the fucking roadie. Thanks, mate. Gives him a shit-coated high five. <laughs> yeah. I was up shit creek until you came. <laughs> Don't right. know. That's bad. Yeah. God, suck. So at, at this point, maybe <laughs> we should get all the all of our main characters kind of splinter off. Yes. Like the, the alpha male wants to get to the front of the mosh pit. Yep. Our waster guy wants to go and do some more drugs. Yep. The influencer wants to get like the perfect boomerang. She's, she's not even listening to the music. She's literally trying to get all the opportune shots. She's ticking off a list. I've got to get the photo with this person in front of that. Duck facing everywhere. Her phone is morphed into her hand. She's just yep. doing the rounds. She's live streaming the whole thing. The Christian couple are like rubbing each other against in the tent. They're back in the tent. They don't even care about the music. No. We, we kind of realize that the nerdy guy might be the main character. He's, he's kind of out. So we're following him, right? Yeah, because he's done the good thing. He's, he's saved the roadie from the shit pit. So yeah. He's a good bloke. And he's looking at Marvel merch. <laughs> I don't know. Thinking about buying a pair of earmuffs. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a bit loud. Yeah. It's now like 20 minutes to midnight. Right. Rain's still coming down hard. And maybe it's, it's, at this point, flash flood. Water starts rushing into the festival grounds. Yeah. But Hootie and the Blowfish is on stage. The crowd is already packed. Like, there's no getting out of this place. So we're seeing like water starting to gush in from, you know, like... From all angles. Security guards that are guarding like structures and fence. They're like... Whoa, they get take, overtaken by gusts. Of Nothing they can do. Kids in the mosh pit are already like waist deep in water. Like yeah. It happens that fast. In this flash flood, we notice Croc come over the top of the hill. Yeah. Rushes down into the festival. So he's in amongst it now. Carnage begins. I mean, the, the, the first kill is probably going to be the one that starts the panic. Can we get Bindi Owen in this? Yes. What's what better song? tribute to Steve <laughs> Owen would be to have Bindi both Owen of his children... devoured by the crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know who we should have had the fucking roadie? Who's that? Paul Hogan. Paul bloody Hogan. Paul Hogan should be the roadie. That's fantastic. Fuck Shane Jacobson. Let's get Crocodile Dundee in <laughs> yeah. as our fucking hero. That's brilliant. Yeah. But he's got to pack on some pounds for it. Yeah, he does. Like a fat Paul Hogan. Yeah, out of like shape. Like he's got to go Eric Banner, chop a fat. Who he's setting up. Yeah. And he, um, he's putting in his microphone. He's yeah. like, he goes, that's not a mic. This is a mic. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should do it for all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a beer. <laughs> this is a beer. He's just got a bigger one of everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's good. Yeah. All right. So Paul Hogan is our roadie. <laughs> yep. Who was initially covered in shit. Yeah. Mate, you got a big chunk of shit on your nose. That's not a chunk of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like it either way. And then, the, and then at the end of it, he's like, 
oh, that's a crocodile. He goes, that's not a crocodile. Oh, no, actually, that's a fucking crocodile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a massive crocodile. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so Bindi Irwin is the first victim to get yeah. taken. <laughs> Maybe she's like dancing on a little podium or whatever, having a great time, and the croc takes her. That's what sets off mass panic. Yeah, if they can kill Bindi, yeah, it's we're all fucked. Mass panic ensues, but the crocodile just heads straight to the mosh pit. And it's like a lawnmower through tall grass. Just carnage. Just shredding its way through. Yeah. Body parts flying this way, that way. That, that should be a top shot too. You see him into the mosh pit. Yeah. And just kids just... Leaving getting... just a red trail behind it. Oh, this is gnarly. Fucking crock and roll. <laughs> Making its way through the fucking pit. And one by one, after we get each one of our main characters gets picked off. Yeah. Alpha male would be in the mosh pit. He'd be one of the first to go. He's the one who's pushed his way to the front. Yeah. And he's like looking back. Because he's made it to the front. Yeah. And he can see like in distance, like hearing screams and like, but he can't see because there's so many people. And yeah, it's just yeah, getting... yeah. Jaws come over the top. <sighs> Hootie don't stop playing because they're so old and yeah. they can't really see past the lights. Yeah. They just think the crowd's going off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They think they're getting a really good response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are we 10 minutes to midnight now? Yeah. Murder is really going down big time. There's body parts floating around. People are scrambling over the top of each other, drowning each other to get away. Or maybe the croc gives itself a break from all the carnage. Maybe our, our young horned up couple are back Goes in to the, the campsite. Tents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get the silhouette shot of them kissing. And then you see, they, they see like a, come, come past. I'm like, what? What was that? What's that? Is there something outside? And we hear that dinosaur rumble. And maybe he was just like inches away from getting it in. Yeah. He's like, come on, baby. It's a special night. Maybe just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> and then they keep, they think someone's like pranking them. Maybe he does a head check, like to check it out. And comes back and he's got no head left. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. How about this? Yeah. They're about to fuck. Okay. And he's like building up this moment for fucking months. Yeah. Because she's a hardline Christian. He's going to church. Yeah. He doesn't want to. No. But he wants to hit that. So she's finally said, yes, this is the night. Yep. They're going to do it at midnight. <laughs> they're right. going to gonna ring in the new year. Sure. <laughs> but he needs to piss. Oh no. So he goes out to piss. Okay. The croc just bites his dick and he comes back into the tent and he just like covers her face in blood. Just the tip. <laughs> <laughs> She's like screaming. All right. And then he just monsters the whole tent. That is awful. Yeah. So they go down. Maybe the waster, he's already seeing monsters. He's so high, he's seeing like porpoises with teeth. And Yeah, where is, it, where, where is he? He's like he climbed a tree or something. What's he doing? Maybe once the water comes in, he was already lying on a lilo. So he doesn't even realize that he's now floating away. He just, <laughs> he just thinks he's like, he's so high. He's, he's yeah. unaware of the fact that he's now buoyant atop water. He's floated out into a paddock nearby where the crocs are like circling him. Yeah. So there's other crocs? Maybe because the, the festival has been held in this valley for like the last few years and maybe the vibrations of the music and stuff has been pissing these crocs off. Like they hate it. Like it, it, it gives them anxiety and shit. Yeah. So maybe once it starts again and they've now got access in there. And they're drugged up. Drug fueled. The drugs was the catalyst. Yeah. They're now in full on rage mode. Yeah. We got one like alpha croc. Central croc, yeah. That's doing the main damage. Yeah. But we got all these little crocs <laughs> splintering off just like savaging people in the corners. Yeah. So the influencer, I reckon, she wouldn't have dropped her phone. Like she's still live streaming. She's Boy. oblivious. She's so into herself. Like she's taking these photos right. and she doesn't care about the people like behind them going screaming right. and blood and she's she's not even noticing. She's it. just getting these comments coming through. What's that in the? She's background? just like putting filters to mask yeah. them out. Yeah. She's just found a really nice spot where the stage lights kind of like light her face nicely. And so where's the nerdy guy? I reckon the nerdy guy, like he's a smart dude, so he would have gone for high ground, like scrambled up like a lighting scaffold. I think or something. he's like on top of the stage or something. Like mm -hmm. he's high. He's he's at the highest up point. in the lighting rigging or something. Yeah, he's at the highest point. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he spots mm. her. Because she's, she's gone to high ground to get the good reception. He's seen her and he's like, fucking get over here. Got to get up here. She's, she's like, oh, well, it's probably good lighting up oh, there. That, yeah, I'll get a good shot from up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she clambers up. So now, now it's just the two of them on this rickety scaffolding. Hootie is still playing. Hootie's Hootie still, still, still playing. Yeah. Maybe it's only when Hootie gets <laughs> fucking taken out yeah. that she realizes that the danger is afoot. Yeah. Hootie gets mauled and shredded beneath them. Yeah. And it's at that moment that the music stops and she's like, oh my God. The scaffolding's like, it's about to go. It's just like on its last legs. Yeah. It's clear that, that it's only strong enough to hold one of them. It's a titanic moment. Yeah. Someone's got to sacrifice themselves for the, to save the other. But how, how do they choose? Instapol. She puts out an Instagram <laughs> poll to all her fans. Maybe she's got like 80k fans. Yeah. Which one of us should go for the betterment of the other one? And maybe it's at, at that point she realizes most of the fans on her website Hate follow her. Yeah, they hate follow her. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're all like, just kill yourself. So it's like 90 to 90% to 10%. So she's pretty disappointed <laughs> that the result's coming through. Yeah. But she'd lie because she's a piece of shit. Shit, yeah. She's like, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. 
they, t- they say you should go. And he's like, oh, okay. Know, he's a good bloke. Yeah. Yeah. People have spoken. So he's prepping himself to jump in. What happens? And, and maybe she wants to get one last selfie <laughs> of the two of them. <laughs> yeah. It's like, just wait. Let me get one last. Hashtag sad face. Let's get a sad face. I'm going to miss you. <laughs> yeah. And she drops the phone. Yeah. And it plummets down into the, the waiting proc's mouth. And she's that narcissistic and she's that attached to her phone. Her first reaction is to go after the she phone. She goes straight after it. And she just loses balance. Instant karma. Instant karma. She gets eaten by the croc. Yep. It's just him now. And then it's like a ship. The last bit of scaffolding goes up. It was yep. a seesaw. The last support beam cracks and he's now just hanging yep. by a thread now. Yeah. And it's going under. Water's rising. Croc's circling. He's got his eyes right on him. Who's our hero? Well, this is the return of Hogs. <laughs> <laughs> Crocodile Dundee, motherfucker. Yeah. How does Hogs get there, though? Fanging it on his jet ski. Yes. He's got, like, Akadaka stickers. Yeah, mullet flapping out behind <laughs> his head. No hair on top. Just skullet. Brody skullet. He's got the perfect skullet <laughs> flapping in the breeze as he jet skis towards main stage. Maybe he ramps up <laughs> off the off the, off the Croc's tail. <laughs> yeah. And as he flies past a nerd, chicken wings him on the way through. Doesn't even break a sweat. Just <laughs> no. Go on, mate. <laughs> Perfect landing in the water. Yeah. They're just fanging out of the valley together. That's a great ending. Love it. That's a film. What are we calling it? Big Croc. <laughs> Big Croc. <laughs> Is that the best you can do, big croc? <laughs> crocodile. Crocodile's all right. Crocodile. I don't mind croc and roll. Croc and roll. Crocapalooza. <laughs> I don't mind crocapalooza either. Crocapalooza. Crocapalooza is a front runner, front runner for me so far. Got any tags? Watch millennials get turned into crocomoly. <laughs> <laughs> I like crocomoly. You like it? When the weather turns bad, this punk croc <laughs> delivers a serious cold snap. I feel like one too many. That's terrible. No, no, it's good. It's just... I'm shoehorning it. So let, let's go back to Crocopalooza. Watch these millennials get turned into Crocomoly. Have we got a soundtrack for this? Crocodile Rock. Crocodile Rock. Obviously. Well, we got, we got a Hoodie and Blowfish are going to be on there. Yeah. Bit of Matchbox 20, obviously. Yeah. Bit of Vanilla Ice. Just all the festival bands, basically, can be the soundtrack as we lead it up to it. Yeah. Who's all our characters? So Paul Hogan's a roadie. Nerdy Kid can be uh, Jesse Eisenberg. The Waster Kid could be Miles Teller. Whiplash. Whiplash. Who's the influencer girl? We've got Bindi Owen as cameo. Yeah, Bindi Owen's a good cameo. Belle Delphine could be our influencer. Who's she? The chick who recently sold her bathwater. She's like massive. Oh, so on. she's actually Instagrammer. She's a massive Instagram. Okay, yeah. Yep. And who's the who's the cute Christian nerdy couple? The, the couple from Big Bang Theory. I think it's Johnny Galecki. And Are they too old now? Katie Cooker. They're pretty old though, right? They're about the same age as all these. He was in Roseanne. How old is that kid? He was a kid in Roseanne. Was he really? Yeah. The Stranger Things couple. <laughs> 11. No, no, the couple, the older uh, Steve and the skinny one. The, that, that couple, yeah. the, the older buyer's kid. It's like a couple Stranger Things kids <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. That's a film. That's a good film. We did it. Yeah. So what did you think of the cameo? Hogs himself. Mr. Dundee. We couldn't do it without him. Man's an icon. Comes in on a jet ski and saves the day. Yep. As I recall. I believe so. Yeah, we just listened to didn't it. Didn't we just listen to it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, from meth gators to courtroom farts. Indeed. Next week, we've got an episode based on a news story about a young barrister with uncontrollable flatulence. Yeah, and we took that movie and made a courtroom drama with romance, with talking anuses. Not since Ace Ventura, we've seen a talking anus in cinema. And it's about bloody time it got its time back I on know. the big screen. Overdue, if you ask me. <clears throat> well overdue. So until next week. Don't forget to flush. See you, cunts. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. We jumped over three linebackers in midair. Sprouted animals like a gazelle. <laughs> no one laughs at a master quack fool. Real nice. Many have died from starvation due to the difficulty of finding enough food such as seals. Shut up. No more Mr. Nice Duck. That's it. Right, Mr. Six? What do you make of that? You know, it's the most fantastic story I've ever heard. The Round Carpet Podcast. Let's dive in. <laughs> Get it all out now. What have you been up to? How? What? Oh, fuck it. <laughs> Josh. Mate. As soon as the mic goes on. Yeah. It's been a while since we've done one of the... It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what was in my head. It's It's been a while since we've done one of these, Joshua. <laughs> Sorry. Have you boys had bear, your gummy bears tonight?
No. Just, just yeah, well, he's on him, of course. I'm ready to go. Can you suck your gut in a bit? Oh, you yeah, can't. You really should, hey? <laughs> you can't. Yeah, because... I haven't lost a baby weight yet. Yeah, because your guts are in shot on wide, so... You, why would you fucking say that right before we hit the prayer score? I feel like this has been, again, terrible. No, this, I think it's going well. I did think for a minute that this <laughs> had something to do with a particular ex-girlfriend. I was like, would she be that deviant to design a t-shirt? <laughs> and plant it in a shop near where I live? Yeah. Could be one of many, right? Could be, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't put it past any of them. Yes. I know where you're going with this. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. No, you go. No, you go. No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> You must think I'm an idiot. Okay, so there's a giant crocodile behind me? I'm a, I'm a real scared. Could you guys go get me a tissue? I think I'm gonna cry. Let's go.